Okay. Okay. I mean, you talked about the importance at the beginning of the heartfelt desire. Uh, others use the word longing. Um, as the, almost the, the, the fuel that enables one to go into the inquiry. To what extent, when I experience the desire and longing, then some sense of suffering may come with that too. Have you found in your own path a way to deal with the emotional aspect that may come with that? Uh, where does the opening is that enables me not to be attached to the emotion that comes up? Right. Uh, the emotional dimension is a very important part of this inquiry I'm talking about. Meaning I, the desire the, it has to be heartfelt, first of all. It can't be just I am curious in my mind mentally or cerebrally curious. Like, my heart has to really want to know. And uh, really, when we investigate, we find out that the heart really wants to know. Everybody's heart wants to know, but I might not be in touch with it. And to be in touch with it, I have to really process my feelings, my emotion. I have to have my emotions available to me. I have to understand them. They have to discharge. The heart has to be open in some kind of way, some kind of deep way for that love to manifest, you see. It, many of us don't necessarily feel that love directly, not because it isn't there. It is natural that your heart will want to see the truth because that love is the same thing as the love of the absolute to reveal itself. It's the same thing, absolutely. There's no two loves. There's only one love, experience from one end or another. But to feel that, we have to go through love stuff, love thing. And it includes feeling our longing, our pain, our suffering. And at some point, when you begin to, at least when I began experiencing the love itself, the love for the truth, as it is, for itself, it's like I didn't really care. I realized what I felt. I didn't care whether there was suffering, pain, fear, terror. I mean, the kind of terrors I went through and the fears and the heartaches and the wounding and the disintegration and the going through. I mean, I could fill a box with it. You know, I don't talk much about it, but it's like the more we feel that love, the more we feel that true dedication, which is, turns out at some point, is the love of the truth itself, to reveal itself, because the truth is inherently, naturally self-revealing. And that tended to self-reveal is this dynam dynamism, that force within the, the absolute that wants to reveal itself to, to whatever can be aware of it. You see? So when we feel that, first to get there, we need to feel, be, access our emotion, be able to feel our emotion. We need to be able to process them to some degree, and be able to tolerate them, be able to accept them, be able to understand them. And at some point, like, there is, it's, it's not an issue. It, the, this path I'm talking about has not, uh, does not have much to do with the liberation from suffering. It has to do with the love of the truth. It's, it's a different thing. The path that has to do with liberation from suffering comes out, out of compassion, you see, out of kindness, which is there. It's not like, it's not, you know, I'm, not, I'm against it. But what I'm talking about, the inquiry I'm talking about, has to do with really liking the truth. I, I, it turns me on. It's wonderful. I feel happy about when I see the truth. I get all, that's it. When I feel the truth, see that whatever it is, at any level, I'm just beyond myself. That's it. That's what my heart wants, you see. And then, who cares whether sometimes there's pain, there's difficulties in the world, in, in my life, or inside myself. And, of course, if you read about the various people who come through some kind of depth in their process, I know for everybody to go through that. Most people, at least. Some people might be unusually open from the beginning, but most of us, we have so much accretion of stuff, so much ignorance, so many veils, so many 
illusions and delusions and positions and belief and reaction, objectivations and beliefs about ourselves. I mean, there are millions and trillions of them. I mean, it's, it's a lot, a lot. And in the process, we have to tolerate it and let it come out. And so much of what the truth we find out is those kind of truth at the beginning. Finding out how big a jerk I am, how scared I am, how selfish I am, how mad I am, I hate this person. All these truths at the beginning are very painful for us. Or how much I feel I'm terrible, I'm inferior, nobody loves me, nobody likes me. All these things, we have to really, these are much of the pain. Until, of course, as we go through, we get to the actual structures of the self. And those, to see those and let them go are scary in a different way. It's more, we're going to die, we're going to fall apart, we're going to go crazy. It's terrifying. And if we are aware, if we're in touch with that love in us, it's like, you know, if I love it, you know, just like when you totally love for somebody, it doesn't matter what happened, what's going to happen. The most important, the important thing is that you want to be with them. People tell you, oh, what's going to happen to your job? What's going to happen to this? What's going to happen to that? When you're taught in love, it doesn't matter. These are irrelevant to some sense. They're peripheral, you see. You can't even think that way. So we get a courage with that love, you see. It brings with it a courage and a determination. But definitely, yes, I experience a lot. I still experience some of those difficulties sometimes because I'm not completely 100% enlightened, you see. But it's, it is, that's the natural thing. We all have to go through that. Because that's what's in the way. That's why we don't see the truth. We don't, it's not like we don't see the truth because the truth is subtle. That's part of it. But really, when we get down to it, that's a small part of it. The biggest part of it is that there are many things we don't want to see. Things that are painful, too scary. You see, too unknown. We feel too alone too much into some kind of abyss, we don't want to go there. It's not because of how subtle it is. The subtlety, when it comes, it's delightful. You see, that's the wonderful thing about it. But to experience, for instance, at some point, to recognize yourself as absolute truth, is like you have to see something pretty scary, like, I don't really exist, never existed, not only that, nobody really exists the way they think, you see. And I have been believing this big lie and story about myself and everybody, and everybody believe it, and at some point I realize it's not true. So what does that mean, you see? And not only that, those people all around here are not here. They're not what they think they are. So first of all, I'm in big trouble, what's going to happen to me? Not only that, I'm going to be old by myself, you see? So think like that. It can be, you know, terrifying. So that's nothing new. I mean, that's been commented upon and discussed. You know, there's nothing unique or different about this particular work. Yes? Uh, you, f you followed your absolute own path. Is it possible for us to follow absolutely our own paths and still follow your path? In, in other words, if you had met yourself 20 years ago, yeah. would you have joined or would you have said, <laughs> I've got to take my own path? 